Hey guys, Cyberdenna here. Welcome to a different view of my filming space. So we're currently facing the opposite way than we normally do. I'm usually focused with you guys this way. But today you're getting to see the craft side of the room. So a couple of weeks ago I posted my entry for the 2019 Australian Nick Space Awards and in that I wore two different sets of horns which you can see in the background and I had a comment from Samantha asking to see how they were made so that's what this week's video is going to be. So the process is pretty easy I'm just going to show you how I did it. Um, the horns I'm going to make this time are a set of cosplay horns for my roleplay character. She um, has like a fey deal going on so she can call to the fey and when she calls she gets horns. I've cosplayed as her a couple of times in the past and I've worn these restyle horns for her. So what I'm going to do is using these as my base idea I'm going to make bigger um, angrier slightly more evil kinds of horns these are pretty kind of unsealy as it is but I want to make them more so to start I'm gonna pop these on look in a mirror and just see where they sit on the headband compared to my hair and everything like that and then I'm going to use my plastic headband that I've got which I just got at a cheap store which is pretty much the same size so I might even just mark on here with a chalk pen where the middle of these horns is to give myself a guide that way I can have it all sized up. So let's get started. Alright, so the things you'll need if you want to do this is a thick plastic, preferably, headband. Um, you could probably do it with a cloth covered one, but I haven't tried it. This does use hot glue, so whatever hot glue can stick to going to be a good option. So I've got this, I just got this from a dollar store, it's cheap and easy. I've got some wire, I think this is 14 or 16 gauge, it's not too flexible but it is pretty easily moldable. Snips and pliers to help make shapes cut lengths, a hot glue gun and extra hot glue sticks. You don't need a lot of hot glue for this but it is very helpful to have on hand. Alfoil, aluminium foil, this was, I just bought the cheapest one that Woolworths had or Coles wherever. I'm going to use plaster bandage as well which will just be cut up into small strips and masking tape and later on paint but for now we're going to focus on making the shape so I have a head block who's seen better days and she's just on a stand so she's nice and an easy height for me to reach and she's going to be my lovely model throughout this but I don't need her just yet so she can just chill out to the side so these horns do go up quite a bit and they've got a nice swoop and curve so I want to make them go out a bit more. So I'm just going to do my best to line up the ends. I'm 
I'm using a chalk pen. I'm just going to mark where the middle of the horn sits. Once that's marked, then you can take your wire and measure how long you want your horns to be. Always cut a bit more than you think you need because you can always snip off any excess, but it's a lot harder to add more on. You also need extra to make the base to attach to the headband. So these horns are somewhere around 10 inches long. So I'm going to make mine quite a bit bigger than that I think. And then I'm just going to use that one to cut a second. You can wear gloves while you're doing this if you want. Uh, it can get sharp edges on it. Another option if you're worried about the sharp edges is that you can just pop like a dab of hot glue on them. Or just using your little pliers, just turn the end over and give it a good swish. I have some big ones to help me do that. Let's see if that helps. So, it's good to have a couple of pairs of little pliers so that you can start forming the base. So I start with the little loop and just make a little spiral around it. I'm not the best at working with wire but you don't have to be great. You just have to be able to do good enough. So the spiral that you make just has to be wide enough to fit on the headband. Once you get to that point, you just use all your muscle power that you've got to give it a nice bend go upwards. Then you've got your two, which may or may not be the same length anymore, but that's fine. No stress. So all we're going to do to attach our spirals is on that X that we made, just glob on a nice healthy amount of hot glue. with the angle pointing forward, just shove it on in. And just go around any bits that might be lifted up a little and just seal it in. One kind of bug antenna done. And that's pretty much all the hot glue that we need until the end when we add flowers if we so desire. Which I do want to put flowers on. Number one, it just helps to disguise the band and it looks pretty so why not? So from here we start shaping the wires. So they don't have to be perfect what do I want them to do? So I sort of want them to come out a bit more than those other ones did. So bring them out and back in. Alrighty, so got sort of the base shape done. You can spin them around, have a look, see if you need to 
try and change anything. They don't have to be exactly symmetrical because it is a natural kind of formation. This is when we need our alfoil. So you can just rip it or cut it into strips and we're going to start wrapping it around these wire frames. I kind of just cut it up, fold it up, and then starting at the base, wrap it around. So the neater you can make this, the easier it does make the rest of making the horns. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect at all, but trying to keep it as smooth as possible helps keep it as smooth as possible. It's basically, it's basically it. So I'm going to continue doing that all the way up to the ends and then start building up bulk around the base because you want them to start thicker and taper off and as I go I'm going to check the symmetry of them because it is foil you can still move them a bit and make sure they're as even as you want them to be um, this one does look longer so maybe I'll nip a bit off it or maybe I'll just add on some extra foil to the end of this one to give it a bit more length I'll see how I feel Once you've got your base foil layer on, you can then see how uneven you've made them, and you can adjust. Try to get them to look kind of similar, and then you can address any like thin areas. So this is just like your base coat. Have a look, have a play, and then just keep on building up. Probably, I imagine I might do one or two more layers of alfoil, and then I'll be back to continue. So this is how thick I'm going to make my first layer of foil. I'm going to do the other one off camera and then I'll be back to show you where the masking tape comes in. So I'll be right back. I am back. I've done all of the wrapping on these guys and sort of made them as even as I can. And I've decided that I want to add some more to them. So I'm going to add couple of extra horn areas coming off the sides here. So now that I've got my extra horn protrusions on, I'm going to wrap them in foil like I did with the two main horns and then we will be back for the next step with masking tape. So I've covered one of my multi-pronged horns with masking tape, now we're going to do this one. So the main thing is just to try to keep it nice and tight while wrapping, so it will shrink down a little bit, that's fine. You can still manipulate it a little bit when it has got the masking tape on. Um, but yes, I usually start at the base and work my way up. I've pre-ripped a bunch of masking tape on my desk. The sealy horns were the easiest for this step because you can, like, the nice, simple, smooth swoop. I just used the roll and just wound it around the entire way. But these ones are a little bit trickier to get into everything. So 
right, now I'm just going to use a couple of skinny pieces to secure the sides to the headband. you've got all of that on, you can have a look at them, judge them a bit, make sure they're looking as even as you want them to be, do a light squeeze into different places if you need. You can also try them on, make sure they're not too forward or back heavy. Um, I tried these ones on before and they were feeling pretty good so we're going to move on to the next step. So what we need now is to cut up our plaster bandage into little squares and strips and get a bowl of water. So I'll be back with that and we'll start the next step. It is also important to note at this point you will want a floor cover if you have carpets or nice flooring. Just put down an old sheet or something you don't care about, old towel, so that your ground is protected because this step does get messy. Wear stuff you don't care about, take off your jewellery. You can wear gloves if you want but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so I'm back. I have my bowl of water. I have my plaster bandage cut up. My floor is covered. I have no jewellery on. And I'm ready to get started. So, I'm using warm water. I don't know if it makes much of a difference. People say it does. So you take your strip, you dip it in your water, and you squeegee it out to fill in all the gaps and then you just slurp it on. I feel like I may have covered this in a plastic bag last time. Go back. Problem solved. So I made the Sealy horns with paper mache and that was a nightmare. I didn't anticipate it being so hard to do paper mache. So when I thought about doing the plaster I was kind of unsure if I even wanted to try it because seriously it was it was a mess. It was hard. It didn't smooth out the way I wanted it to but the plaster is definitely much easier to work with. It's much more malleable. It goes around corners a lot nicer. All in all, a much nicer thing to deal with. Um, I can't, I think I got this particular plaster from an art supply place but I have seen it in dollar stores as well. Um, everything's kind of, you know, few and far between here. But these kind of things have been cropping up more and more. I initially actually bought this to do a face, face cast because I saw an easy at home face cast idea which I had thought about doing but never got around to obviously so I had this laying around and I thought why not try it for the horns this does 
feels smooth really nicely with your fingers. It sticks down really well. That was sort of some of the problem I was having with paper mache is it didn't want to stick even to the masking tape which is why you put the masking tape down over the foil because otherwise nothing's going to stick to it. Make sure you use a pair of scissors that you don't care about to cut the bandage because it does dull them quite a bit. You are cutting you know, dry plaster. Alrighty, so I have completed the base of the horns. So after I applied the plaster bandage to them, I made a like kind of paste with plaster of Paris and water and I just smoothed that over just to get rid of any of the texture of the bandage and just to even it out as much as I could. If you wanted to smooth it out further just get rid of any really prominent ridges. You can lightly sand over it with some sandpaper but I wouldn't go too crazy just because it is still pretty close to where the plaster bandage is and you don't want to reveal the bandage. So, this is where we've gotten up to this week, and next week's video will be painting and finishing the horns, adding any decorations and flowers, stuff like that. So make sure you're subscribed down below, give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed watching this process so far, and make sure to check out next week's video to see how these end up.